Hello everybody. Moses Moody has been really blossoming in the last week, even though the Warriors games have had pretty disappointing endings. Moody hit 13 shots in a row, and that seems to have given him enough of a psychological green light that he's playing his best basketball. It started innocuously enough. Moody has had this habit for the beginning of the season where once he gets his drive stopped, he would pivot back out to look to throw the ball back out. But there's a drive, help comes, Moody with a subtle ball fake, gets the defender up in the air, and goes right back up for the layup. Good job. This play starts as a simple split. Steph runs at Moody. In the simple split, one man dives to the basket, one man pops out. Steph cuts through, and it looks like the Warriors are setting up some kind of pin-in screen, maybe where Steph can run off of Looney's screen, or some kind of off-ball action here where the ball will swing back to Steph. But Moody does have the ball, and he's got Patrick Beverly, who's pretty eager beaver as a defender, and Moody is just going to jab Steph once, twice with his right foot, and then give the ball a shake to make Beverly really feel like Moody's going to drive. That makes Beverly hop back one foot, which gives Moody enough space to launch. The next game, Moody had a pretty quiet game up until the fourth quarter. Dallas was running a brazen double team of Steph Curry. Here's Steph. Here are the twins from The Shining standing in front of Steph saying, we want you to play with us forever and ever and ever. That leaves someone open. That means Moody is the one who is the lucky winner. Steph releases the ball to Moody. Doncic now is leaving the double team and he's looking around. Where can I find someone to defend? This is the person he should be defending. Moody says, thank you for letting me be myself again. <laughs> that was a pretty lucky roll, but it counts the same three points as a swish. Steph is quietly good at exploiting these early offense opportunities. Here it's a four on four, but Steph is going to drive and that's going to force help to rotate. Steph turned the corner on his defender. His defender, of course, stayed with him. This defender stunted in and is now trying to recover back out to his man, who is Moses Moody, who drifted over and made himself open. Number 25, just for good measure, is following Steph instead of guarding Andrew Wiggins because no one ever got fired for following Steph Curry. Steph clean throw over to Moses Moody. He is really open. No one is anywhere close to him. And if he can keep on making these shots to punish the overplays, that will be so big for the Warriors offense. That would be a great role for him. Dallas still playing the Shining Twins defense on Steph. Here it looks like they're just going to straight up go to him and say, play with us forever and ever and ever. But when Steph tries to pull the Shining Twins over to the side, Luca is going to peel off instead. He says, I remember what happened last time. Last time Moody drifted over here and got an open three. I'm gonna go over and defend him now. Here Steph makes a little motion with his hand and stares at Moody and probably yells something at him saying, come over here, you're needed now, Moses. Come and set a screen for me. So here's the screen. Steph takes a screen. That forces Doncic really to rotate to Steph. Steph's man stays with him, of course. Doncic rotates to Steph, of course. Moody pops out to open space. Steph rotates it. Now this defender has to guard Moody or Otto Porter Jr., preferably not both. So Moody just drives to force him to choose. And then Moody stops and pops this delicate little floater. It just pachinkos in. Steph dribbles into trouble on the wing. He immediately encounters the Shining Twins. Moody is the release man again. It's been working out pretty well. Benny Smith over here says, I remember what happened the last few plays. I'm going to rotate over and make sure that Moody is not going to be unguarded as the release man. Ball goes to Moody. Moody immediately passes to the open man, Andrew Wiggins. So now we have Wiggins drawing this defender, rotating hard. A little bit of not being on the same page. Otto Porter Jr. is coming across. He's flashing to open space. Wiggins instead says, now I'm going to just blow by this defender who's closing out on me, which makes Otto Porter Jr. have to sort of, he almost does a double take and then turns around and just gets out of dodge and says, I got to get out of here. There's a large Wiggins running at me. Moody's man digs in to try to stop the, the drive. So Wiggins can dish to Moody. And now it's constantly attacking the closeouts. Moody turns a corner on his defender. 
this point, this defender stabs in but knows he wants to recover out to Otto Porter Jr. This defender either has to rotate to stop Moody's drive, in which case Moody can dish it to Looney, or he can just try to split the difference and intimidate Moody, and Moody does not feel like being intimidated. Nice layup. Here's Steph. He knows if he goes fast, this defender will have to rotate to him, and Moody can drift over here and be open for three. Defenders do a good job of stopping Steph. This defender is now peeling off to get to Moody, so Moody has to drift farther and farther to the corner, and Moody says, why don't I just go all the way to the corner? Clay says, that's my corner. I'm used to being the man there, and he's run this lane and coming out the other side to be open for three. So unfortunately, Moody and Clay end up in the corner. Steph throws the pass anyway to Moody. This blind intercept works, just stabs the ball and deflects the ball. So instead of going to Moody, amazingly it goes to Clay. So maybe having two men in the corner is not such a bad idea. Sometimes it's good to have a backup in case the pass gets deflected. Clay gets it. Dallas decides to turn this into a double team trap in the corner and Moody over to the wing where it's a lot less crowded. So Clay dinks the pass over to Moody. Steph's defender does try to do his best impersonation of leaving Steph. He's like, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna switch. Oh, Steph, I can't quit you. And so he digs in, stops on his foot and his weight is ready going back to Steph. I think Moody never thought for a second that Steph's defender was gonna leave him and he just lines the shot up. Yeah, and I don't fully remember how that game ended, you know, it's, uh, it's a little blurry in my head. Next game, the Warriors were playing like they really need summer vacation in the first quarter against the Lakers. But Moody came in and did inject some energy. So here there's a throw ahead and Moody attacks. And instead of settling for some twisty layup, he throws it down with authority. He even got fouled there, but no call. Here the driver decides to attack Jonathan Kaminga. The driver tries to body Kaminga and ends up bouncing off of Kaminga and then the ball bounces away. At this point things seem possibly under control, but these two Lakers are going to get flat out run by Juan Toscano Anderson and Jordan Poole. And Poole with a sweet pass ahead. Now it's a two on one. This defender's best bet is to attack Juan and try to deflect the pass. Not deflected. Layup. This is a 50-50 ball, a ball comes shooting out, and Moody does a good job hustling to pick up the ball. I like the aggression here, he feels like everyone's off balance, I'm just going to keep on going. He turns the corner and keeps on going. Horton Tucker tries to take a charge, but Moody does this pretty elegant little Euro step around him. One step, two step, and then as he's drifting to the side, this uh, very delicate bank shot, and the foul. Steph's in the corner here, Moody decides to set a screen for Steph, so he gets in between Steph and Austin Reeves. Not a bad job, and he's getting a lot of Austin Reeves here. Steph is temporarily open, so the ball whips to him. At this point, Steph decides to cut to the basket. So what do you think Reeves and LeBron James are gonna do? You guessed it, Reeves is going to stay with Steph. No one ever got fired for following Steph. LeBron James is going to just zone up Steph so that he can't get to the rim. And that leaves Moses Moody open in the corner. I don't know if LeBron James is four-dimensional chessing this, like maybe he thinks it's okay for him to shoot, but uh, this is pretty open and Moody has hit quite a few shots in a row in the last week. Things looking pretty good for the Warriors at this point. I don't really remember how this game ends either. My memory's gotten kind of fuzzy recently. Moody's hot streak continued even into the next game, the first couple of shots in the Denver game. Another split cut. Moody comes over to set this flare screen for Poole. This defender does a good job getting around Moody's screen. Moody's man is sunk way back here. I don't know if you read the scouting report, so after Moody sets the screen, he says, well, I'll just go set up on the three-point line here. And this is aggression. I think he was looking for his shot because this is not a bad contest by Aaron Gordon. It's just Moody was very decisive in deciding to shoot as soon as he's getting that ball. And if he was open, right in Gordon's face. The young dubs made a valiant effort and they almost stole this game in Denver, missing almost all the starters. They did try to exploit this defense that Jokic is playing. He's playing dropped pretty far back. Looney sets the screen, nails Moody's man. There Moody's turned the corner and Jokic is dropped pretty far back from Moody. And so Moody says, I will teach you not to do that. And he fires up this open three off the dribble in the pick and roll. 
So all in all, really good choice of shots. They all came in the flow of the offense. A couple of them were creative finishes around the basket. Some of them were decisive shots when he was open. A lot of them came after he screened for somebody. So he's just fitting in pretty well into the offense now. I feel like he's got the hang of it, and I'm really looking forward to seeing his future growth. Not only has Moody been pouring in points efficiently, but he's been playing steady defense, moving the ball well on offense, and he didn't have uh, any personal fouls during his four-game streak, and for the most part, very few turnovers. So great to see the rookie starting to find his game. Can't resist talking about one more play from the Clippers game, where the ball is loose, and Moody is going to come up with it. Right now, things are in disarray. Clippers defense communicating here. Terrence Mann pointing, saying, Luke Kennard, take Jordan Poole. And Terrence Mann is going to pick up Moses Moody. Things look like they're under control here. We even have Nicholas Batum over here coming in to possibly harass Moody. To be honest, Batum knows that behind him is one Steph Curry, so he's not going to commit that hard to Moody. In fact, at this point, Batum is starting to uh, try to see Moody and see Steph, so he's turning around to make sure Steph is not open. Kennard is on his way to visit Jordan Poole, so Moody decisively says, I'm going to go to the basket. Heck with this. And I mentioned how he was trying to break this habit of getting stopped and pivoting to nowhere. So here, good defense, bumps him on the drive. And so he does stop and starts pivoting. But instead of saying, I'm going to throw the ball out, he says, we're going to use all 360 degrees. Gets the bump from here, possibly another bump from behind. Real soft touch on this. This ball is going to go in. Let's do a quick census of the celebrations. Damien Lee gets the early bird prize. He's the first off the bench to recognize something cool is happening. Draymond Green, of course, Draymond sees all. He's already starting to flex. <laughs> yes, he's uh, wandering out onto the court, flexing his muscles, saying, young man, Moses Moody, you must have had to use a lot of muscles to get that ball through that contact. Kenny Atkinson, assistant head coach, jumps up off the bench and he is pumping his fist. He is excited. There's more flexing here, saying, I recognize the strength that you used to muscle that ball in. Damian Lee using his early advantage to really tighten his muscles here in empathy for the strength required to pull off that maneuver. Chris Chioza, in this screenshot, he looks like he's been uh, really hitting the medical marijuana pretty hard. And over here, he's very delicately pointing with his finger down, down, saying, uh, that basket counts. This is an and one. And our guy Juanito Juan Toscano Anderson, he is simultaneously flexing, saying, you are strong, I see you. And he's also holding a Star Trek phaser or something like that. I guess he's saying, Moses Moody, I see you are strong. And simultaneously saying, the Federation will not accept these acts of hostility from the Cardassian fleet or whatever. And, uh, you know, just keeping the galactic peace while tapping up his teammate that is very efficient work by our guy Juanito 